end. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Guys, 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 Droughtlander is over. It's over. Ah, the, show is, the show is back this Sunday, 8 p.m. on Stars and the Stars app. This is super exciting for all of us. You can see the enthusiasm right now. How do you, I, for you, Droughtlander's been over for a while. You've been making it. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I, is it the same level of excitement when you get that first script that it's you're monumental. doing right now? It's monumental. It's, the rain has come to New York. <laughs> yes, it's we like... brought it with us. <laughs> we're, we're trying to create Scotland right here in Manhattan. <laughs> yes. I just imagine you uh, standing outside uh, Ron Moore's window uh, as he's typing away. And you're just like, you, do you have scripts ready yet, Ron? Can you can, can, can you show us, Ron, what's next? Uh, Ron, where are you? Where are the scripts? <laughs> Ron, Ron, Ron. No, no, Ron wrote the first script and uh, uh, for the season, and it's um, it's a terrific start to the to the season, and the the whole season is really strong, I think. But um, it's it's an amazing episode. Right, right. Uh, coming back, uh, the one thing that was different this time is you weren't together in the first episode, and you're not together for a little while. Maybe, maybe that's why long. it's the best. <laughs> Ow, that hurts just a little bit. Uh, but what was that like as, as performers, not having your, your other half there to, to start the season? Well, what we haven't told you is that um, in all of those clips, that's actually Sam playing Frank. It's um, <laughs> He's just so good. I want to know where you've been. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, for me, it was slightly different because I, I was working with my regular homies. You know, I was working with Tobias and Sophie. Um, so I didn't miss him at all. I don't know. What were you doing? No, I'm... <laughs> it was, um, no, the first episode, you know, we do say goodbye to uh, a lot of our regular characters and um, it's very, you know, it's the beginning, it's a new beginning for, for the show. We, we obviously end up in uh, in Jamaica, in which we were shooting in South Africa, and there's a lot of new faces and a, lot of the, an, a new look to the show. But yeah, the first the first few episodes are, are very sad and there's... Um, yeah. It was it was hard to say goodbye to a lot of our favorite people. Right, right. You were joking about it before, but I mean, how how closely were you sort of following the idea of Jamie and Claire being separate? I mean, did you stay away from Sam on set? Did you make a point of like d doing the the wedding day thing of Very not seeing far your husband? Away. <laughs> um, well, we were, you know, we were working in very different worlds. Right. I mean, you know, I, I was sort of doing the 40s, 50s, 60s. I was a lot, you know, a lot of my stuff was studio based or Glasgow city based, which is Boston, of course. Um, <laughs> and Sam's stuff, they were out in fields that were, where was it? Like Tuke, I think. It was really wet and mucky. Um, so we didn't see a lot of each other. I mean, we did shoot a little bit out of sequence. So it wasn't like we were separated completely. And then we started with the reunion. Um, <laughs> but it did feel, it did feel like, you know, I, there would be a couple of times we'd run into each other and we're like, oh my God, like, what have you been What's doing? <laughs> like, how are you? So it was, it was really nice when we finally got to get into the, the proper gritty stuff, yeah. meaty. Yeah. Steamy stuff. <laughs> what, what, what did you discover yourselves uh, about yourselves as characters and performers, maybe being separated, having to sort of build your own life uh, in, in this way as your character? Were there, were there different aspects of your performance you hadn't considered before? I mean, I think both of us definitely feel our characters are very different in the beginning of the season. Um, Claire, for sure, you know, she's, she's somebody who's lost a part of herself. I mean, she's had to put a, a huge part of herself to one side and, you know, she's a, someone who's very sexually liberated and very passionate and that part of her is gone for the best part of 20 years and that has to have an effect on how you carry yourself, how you interact with people. I mean, she's also a professional doctor, so there's an authority to her and I also think a slight rigidness to her in the beginning of the season. Um, but I'm pretty sure that when she reunites with Jamie that those those layers kind of fall away and she becomes that free and loose woman that she always has been yeah she can't, can't hold herself back no but it's um well I mean there there is an energy and a life to to the two of them when they're right. together and I think so when they're apart um yeah I mean certainly for, for Jamie's uh Jamie's story you know he's learning to live without the woman he loves and and uh, and he finds that very difficult, and he, you know, he, he's a shadow of himself, and uh, it's a, it's a long journey for him to to get back to the man that 
we know and love. And <laughs> it's probably not until she returns that, that that's the case. Right, becomes a whole again in, in, in a way. It's certainly something, uh, w w being able to work in that's this Ron Moore, Ron. Uh -oh. Ron, Ron. Hello. we're not giving away yeah, any yeah. secrets, I, I we're promise. We're calling in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing I wonder, I mean, at this point, three seasons in, these characters are yours on, on, on the show. They exist on the page as well, the Diana, the great, great characters that Diana created. But you have a certain ownership of them after three seasons. H how do you think your versions of them differ from what's on the page? Do you think, do you notice a difference between the, the characters in the book and who you're playing on screen? Well, that's interesting, because I think when you read a book, you always, you know, I always think of it like we all play our own little movie in our head. So... My reading of Claire is through the filter that I interpret her on the scripts as well. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think I think maybe I've tried to make Claire a little bit more earthy or relatable. I think you know. I think sometimes uh, there, you know, when you read a book, there's certain things that translate so well on paper that when you try and put it into action, it can be a little more... I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I get it the page very, and I uh, do what I try yeah. and do. <laughs> no, it's, we were asked this question last night and right. it's like, you know, when you read the book, do you hear each other's voices or whatever? And um, it is a tough one because ultimately the book is different to the script, even though we try and stick as close as possible. Right. I mean, when you read the script, it's slightly different, you know? Right. We have different writers on the show and so ultimately, you know, we try and bring that sort of... It's funneled uh, through many layers of interpretation, <laughs> I right. guess. Yeah. And yeah. by the time it gets to us, yeah, I mean... There's, there's a way that I will see things purely because my life experience right. informs the way I understand something. So, you know, I think it'll, it'll, it'll always be a different interpretation. Right. One thing that's really interesting about this season is the show's always been about, uh, about a woman out of time. And in the beginning of this season, she returns to her time, but it's not the same anymore. It's changed. And certainly something that she wrestles with throughout the first uh, few episodes is the sexism that she encounters, which is much more insidious than she uh, experienced in the 18th century. Uh, what was that sort of, um, like, bringing that out and, and, and depicting Claire's uh, experiences coming back to, the pre to her present day? I, I'm not sure that it's more insidious in the 20th century, but I do think that because Claire in the 18th century is an outsider, mm -hmm. because she's sort of outside the traditional societal, you know, format or whatever of, of, of the Scottish clan system, she's immune to certain rules and regulations that other women of that time are, are subjected to. So when she's back in her own time, she has to sort of fall into step with what everybody else is doing. And she doesn't have the protection of being that other. And so that's why I think you can really notice it. And, and I think it's such a jarring thing because when we first meet her in, in season one, it's, you know, wartime, she's on the front lines with the men as a, as a nurse. You know, women at that point were, were out and they were in the workforce, they were working in the factories, they were part of the war effort. And in the 50s, there was a real retraction. It was kind of like, okay, thank you for all of your work and all your help, but you can go back to the kitchen yeah. and put on that really full skirt and the little blouse and put your hair in a ponytail and we'll all be really happy. And I think that that was really difficult for women. And I think that it's it's really nice that you see that play out. But I love, you know, I think it's, it's in some of the clips and I'm, I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but there's a scene where um, Frank's boss really tries to put her in her place. Right. And I, I love because it's like that's the moment she decided to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. and, and it's such a, for her, it's fuel. You know, when somebody tries to do that and stop her and kind of belittle her, she takes that and she, she turns it into ammunition to kind of be like, right, I'm going to go do something really right. special. Yeah. It's funny yeah. because there is, it seems to be, there's actually more freedom for her in 1700s. Right. Yeah, and we should say it wasn't an easy time for women in the 1700s in Scotland. No. But in some ways, she did have that, that is more, more freedoms in some ways. Yeah. yeah back in the past. Uh, the, the other thing, I mean, certainly uh, in, in the present day, she, we, we see her being very assertive about her body and sex. And I feel like we should dim the lights and put on the, the Barry White at this point Ooh, as we're moving into the Barry. sex discussion. Um, but, but, she, but she is very assertive in, in the present day, and it surprises some of the people she's with. And also uh, for Sam, some of the women in the past that, uh, that Jamie encounters are also very 
very sort of about what they want from uh, from him. Um, so it, it, in terms of that aspect, it, it, it feels like it shouldn't be revolutionary in the modern day to have a show about a woman who... I know, it seems like everyone's level, really surprised yeah. that women like sex. <laughs> I, I don't know how have children been created for eons if women hated sex so much. Um, I don't know. Um, should we do a poll? Do women hate sex that much? <laughs> Raise your hands now. <laughs> The, it, 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 one, one of the things that's been added this season is more female directors uh, to the show. Do you notice a difference in the way they uh, choreograph the sex or just any scene in general, things that they pick up on that, 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 that make it slightly different? That no, you shoot. know what? No, I Happily, I'm, it's so individual. Right. You know, and I, and I think that that's something that there should be more female directors purely because it should represent the population distribution, right. you know. Um, but no, there's some women are very sensitive um, and come from a much m sort of more romantic uh, viewpoint. But then some of our male directors have been more like that. Um, some of our female directors are much more technical and, and you know, it, it just runs the gambit and that's how it should be. You know, it's not, oh, you're women, you're going to look at it exactly this way. No, there's very many different opinions and, and different aspects Should, to it all. It's about the right person for the job. And I think yeah. we, right. we've got the right people for the job. And, um, you know, it, it is fun to work with different directors. But the first few, actually, we have Brendan, you know, who was, um, uh, it was kind of nice to start with him. And um, But then, yeah, we had, we had a real sort of uh, mixed um, group of directors. And I feel like each one brings a new, something different to, to the show. Right. And it's amazing, uh, you know, I would say one of our greatest action directors was Anna Forrester, right. um, who also was able to handle really sensitive material very beautifully. But one of our most sensitive, I think, romantic uh, directors was Metten. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, right. I think it, it I, you know, I love and I, I love that Meryl um, Davis really fought hard to try and get as many female directors as possible. But also I love that it, it, it it's not... It's, it doesn't become a cliche that it's like, oh, the women are good at this thing and right. the men are good at this. No, I, it's, it's great to see that there's such variety among everybody. And I think right. the show has this strength right. you know, and, and sensitivity. And I think that's really important. You know, it's not it's not a show for women. It's it's not it's for everyone. It's right. it, it's got so much more to it. We need more men. Come on. <laughs> there's some here today, though, which I'm very excited right. about. Hi. There's a couple guys in the audience. Me. Hey. <laughs> I will say for audience of both sexes, uh, Sam, your butt gets a pretty good workout in a lot of the episodes this season. So, uh, it, My butt's getting a complex, that... by the way. <laughs> your butt does well, too. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a bit of butt. Sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the other thing that was picked up uh, last season, we, we saw that beautiful episode where Claire lost faith, uh, her child with Jamie. Um, and in that moment, we saw, it was told from her perspective because it was her loss. And then we raced to the end of the season with all the other events. I think this season, we really see how that loss impacted Jamie and the loss of Brianna as well. Um, Sam, what, what, are sort of, what can you talk about in terms of fatherhood for Jamie this season and how he sort of thinks about it and what, what, what being a parent uh, in his head after suffering these losses? Yeah, I think that's... Uh... I'm trying, I'm trying to talk around spoilers here, but sure. um, he uh, obviously it, it greatly affected him. And, you know, a, a father can never quite experience it the same way that, that a mother can or that, that Claire does. But he he does greatly regret that. And, and then to lose Brianna uh, right. is a tragedy for him. So he's lost his whole life. And, and to rebuild that um, takes some time. And then uh, without giving away too much, he maybe finds <laughs> something else to put his life into. But again, it's never right. never runs smoothly for him. Um it's something that he's always wanted, and I think uh, it's something that he yearns for, and, and it's a part of him that's incomplete. Right, right. Uh, n neither of you have, have children yourselves, but were there parts you drew on growing up, uh, your memories of being a child that you wanted to, to bring into your portrayal of uh, parenthood or, 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 or thoughts about being a mother and father? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you steal from every <laughs> moment in your life you can, or, you know, I come from a very big family, all my... Well, Pretty much all my siblings have kids at this point, so I'm an aunt to 11, 12 kids. Um, so, yeah, I think you, you just try and draw on all of those experiences that you have or that you've witnessed. Yeah, I, I mean, in Jamie's case, it's a it's a very lonely season for him <laughs> for a while, and I think it's about companionship and about him wanting to, to nurture something, and I think, um, yeah, it's, it's very sad that he doesn't get to do that. <laughs> 
I do want to talk about your uh, uh, co-star Tobias uh, uh, Menzies, who's who. who is, is, it's me. <laughs> oh, yes, right here. We, we, we you can put on your other Thank face you. now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what's oh. what's uh. funny about this season is he gets to be Frank more often than he has in the past, and you encounter him as Frank more often than he has in the past. Is it funny seeing him in that other persona after being with Black Jack for so long? And, I, I love working with Tobias in the Claire and Frank dynamic. Um, you know, I think it's a really sad... I mean, it's so tragic, those two, because, you know, especially... Tobias plays Frank with such heart, and there's such a, a gentleness to him, and, you know, he's such a good guy in a way. I know in the books he's not as good of a guy, and later on he's not a great guy, but... You know, he takes back this woman who's been away for three years, comes back pregnant with another man's child, and she <laughs> says she's been in the past, and he's like, okay, I'll take you back. <laughs> um, you know, and, and he really does, he does try very hard to give her space to understand, but she's, you know, she's experienced something far deeper and far greater than she ever felt for Frank. And right. so you can never really go back after you've, felt something like that and so the tragedy is that Claire isn't getting what she wants Frank isn't getting what he wants and the two of them are good people trying to make the best out of a really messed up situation and um, it's just really tragic to see them live in this compromised sort of unhappy life you know they they do spend 20 years together, so there there has to be... I think Tobias and I really wanted to not make this like, she doesn't love him, he doesn't right. love her, you know, they're miserable. I don't think you two people would spend 20 years together if that was the case. I don't think Claire would spend 20 years with someone if that was the case. So, you know, I love that it's not just all Frank chasing Claire. Right. <laughs> um, you know, she's essentially a widow in terms of, of the, the Claire-Jamie relationship. So... She has to try and want to succeed. She has to try and want happiness. Right. Um, I think otherwise she would be kind of a pathetic character in some ways. And she's a survivor. And I think she would try and, and, and succeed in every part of her you know, life, whether it's a relationship or career or motherhood. Um, but the tragedy is, is that she, she never is able to replicate or match what she once felt. So... Um, but he's he's wonderful in this role, and and it was great to work with him so much. He really, without giving away any other sort of spoilers, but he uh, he he kind of there's a moment, and you have to watch out for it. But he really beautifully ties. Actually, I think the two characters, mm. Black Jack and Frank, there's just a moment uh, that he ties the two together. Ooh. I'm going to ask you about that moment yeah. later. Well, we shall talk about it. <laughs> if you private. see it in the episodes, tweet at us, and we'll and we'll figure it out. Tweet at Sam, and he'll tell you if you're right or not. Yeah. <laughs> Which scene was it? <laughs> So, so, Sam, I don't know if people know this, but we have a uh, superhero in our midst, kind of. Sam played uh, Batman, uh, the Dark Knight, uh, in a Batman Live stage show. Um, I don't know if you had seen this before, but I want to confirm. Uh, there was this, they made a tartan Lego Batman. And what? I, 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 I want to confirm or deny if this is uh, bottled after you. No, that's me. Is that you? Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's put it up and take it's, a look. It's actually the, to scale we, as well. we, we, we should take the helmet oh my off God, and see, because I, I really wanted to know. I should say the lightsaber uh, doesn't come with it. That was my daughter's. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously you need a lightsaber Why when is you're he backwards. Uh... <laughs> oh, he always, he's always looking over his shoulders. Isn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah, that's exactly how I played it. I right. Is, yeah. is, is that what you really did? Is that your. Yes. yes. There's, I tried to put elements of Batman in, in, in Jamie <laughs> Fraser as much as possible. More than you'd know. There's, Sometimes it's, it's like... It's a spoiler, but I do wear a, I do wear a, a mask uh, in most of the season. <laughs> <laughs> how does one audition for Batman? I really want to... Did you yeah, do uh, Shakespeare and the accent? Shall I compare thee to a uh, summer's day? Or something? What, what, were you, what were you doing? <laughs> how did that go down? <laughs> well, how did it go down? Um, yes, it was... Uh, a very odd experience, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it was. It feels like no, no, no. How did the audition go down? <laughs> oh, the audition. Uh, yeah, that's like thank you, thank don't, you. Don't I got like... the backup here. We're gonna we're gonna make this happen. It was like a stage play, you know. So it was actual scenes. It was like doing a bit of theater, and so there were mm -hmm. scenes as Batman, and there were scenes as Bruce Wayne, and. Um, um, I would love to play him again. <laughs> Maybe on screen. Didn't Ben Affleck pull out of the film? That's right. <clears throat> it. Yep. I come with Zach my own Snyder Lego or whoever is directing. <laughs> Maybe present. Zach. 
Sam Hewen. Scottish Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. We have it in Lego proof, so I think it works. And, and Katrina, I mean, they're looking for a, a, a Joker now. I think, I think let's think big and do, and do Katrina yes. Balfe as, as, as hey, Joker. I'm going to put my hat in the ring. Absolutely, yeah. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Who else played him? He, he, oh, he Heath Ledger, Ledger, Katrina Ledger. Balfe. I mean, Apparently it's a, so. it's a natural Katrina progression Balfe. of exactly, order. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> Who cares about canon? We'll just throw it out. <laughs> God, hey. Why so serious? <laughs> why, why so serious? As people know me, a very serious person. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what, what was sort of your favorite, uh, what, what memory from shooting season three sort of encapsulate the experience from you, for you? I'm sure you have there are lots, but there's one in particular that sort of solidifies in your mind. Oh, God. Um... There's so many. What I think, I mean, being being on a on a, a tall ship boat that yes. has wheels in the middle of a desert <laughs> uh, 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 that's on a Kimball, so it goes backwards and forwards, and you're looking out over the African I know desert, and there's point. a motorway going past, and it it just but so so transportive, and you feel like you're on this great ship. Um, that was we did. We did. I think possibly our well, I don't know if it was your favorite day. It was one of my favorite days, but we are on the ship and. There's there's something that happens. So there's a lot of water, right. but so they had rain machines and you know cannons of water, and it, there was just so much water that you can't even really keep your eyes open or your mouth open or breathe without just being like. Bah, bah. <laughs> but before each shot, we would have to wet ourselves down because it's so hot that you would just sort of dry out in between. So you and I would just Stand dance in the rain. In the <laughs> rain. Like, it was great fun. It was like. And a lot of the acting was that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. like, ah, nah, nah, nah. When you see it, you'll be like, oh. you'll, you'll know the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but there's so much. I mean, yeah, there's, it's, a, it's an, in, uh, an incredible season just to go from Scotland and, and in Boston and, and then to be on these boats and, and then in Jamaica as well. It's just, it expands uh, a great distance. Awesome. Well, let's turn it over to the Sassanax in the audience. Um, the, only, the only thing you can have to ask about Lego or Batman. Uh, but hey, that's not a Sassanax. That's a what, 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 what's the male version oh, of Sassanax? I always wanted to know that. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, but maybe we could make up a name for them. They're not. Oh, I, don't I think you have to, since you're you're, you're, well, um, you're, you're, you're tagline. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the show. I think it's absolutely amazing, and uh, there are so many dramatic scenes in the show, like really intense scenes. Uh, I was wondering, in the first two seasons for each of you, which scene was the most intense, maybe emotionally, uh, to film? I, I, I mean, probably Faith, but I think uh, also the last scene at the Stones, I think that's probably another massive one. Yeah, that was good. I, I mean, obviously the end of... Season one was huge. It was a very intense, weird kind of period, but it was, um, you know, amazing to be given a chance to go so go to these dark places. But I, um, this season, uh, you know, maybe isn't as dark, but it certainly g gave us a lot of acting challenges, and uh, that's what the great joy of the show. I think that we we do get given these wonderful pieces of theatre or drama. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Hi guys, Hi. I'm a big fan of the show and the books. Um, I was just going to ask you, going to South Africa and being on the Black Sails like, film set and everything, what was your favorite memory of either a day or, as you guys just said, the day, but just favorite overall memory or experience that you had? There was a lot of pirate acting going on <laughs> <laughs> from both of us. <laughs> well, there's, there's a thing where, so they have a gimbal which is, you know, it makes the, the set kind of tilt from side to side. But our sound man, it's commonly said on set that he would hear a mouse pass wind on Mars. <laughs> he has very sensitive ears. Um, so they would have to turn it off to get very clear uh, sound. sound yeah. So sometimes you'd have to pretend we're still gimbling. So there was a bit of Star Trek There's acting a lot of Star going, Trek on. Acting going on, <laughs> especially in the beginning before we kind of got it down. And I remember the first day I had to do it, and I, I was like, "Really, guys? Like, what? I don't know what how, what I'm supposed to do." And I did the first take, and I could just hear all this sniggering from uh, <laughs> from Video Village. And I was like, "Okay, maybe I'm going to take it back by about 25 to 75 <laughs> percent." A lot of the boats in interiors are incredible, and they're also on the sound stage there, and um, they're they're very small, cramped, confined uh, area. And uh, I mean, people were bumping their heads like all day. So you're just sitting there, and you know they're setting up for a shot, and you just hear some. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it just, yeah, there was a lot of expletives every day. And our poor director, he, he was just, he kept bashing his head and then he, he eventually ended up just laughing every time he was. I think he ended up with quite brain a damage, yeah. padded hat <laughs> towards the end. Yeah, yeah. Tough. But um, yeah, we had a wonderful time there. So as a nurse myself, one of my favorite things about Claire is that she is a nurse. Did you do anything, um, any research or talk to anyone from her becoming a nurse in the 40s to a surgeon in the 60s? Um, yeah, well, uh, in the 40s, we had, I mean, we've had this great doctor uh, who comes on set who's our medical advisor, and her name is Claire, funnily enough. But she's fantastic. So in the very beginning in season one, We'd gotten these missives, I guess, from the British Army that were um, basically uh, instructions on all the different bandaging styles and things that you had to do on the field. And so that was something that I went over and learned how to do different bandaging things. And I get very protective of the way Claire bandages because Sam <laughs> has a lot of bandages always. And so it's supposed to be Claire doing it, but sometimes it's Sam's costume girls and I can't, I'm always like, she wouldn't nope. do it like that. Wrong. Take it off. <laughs> Wrong. I'll do it. I'll do it. Move aside. And so there's a little bit of control issues going on. Um, but going into the 60s, I mean, I, I, we, did, we have one scene that was so cool to film. Actually, this is, I keep forgetting. There's so much stuff that you just forget about. But I, it's a proper operation. And we had, like, moving parts and prosthetics and... Um, we had to learn how to tie knots off with one hand. And we had an Irish nurse in who was a, a surgical nurse who was very... <laughs> we we kind of walked into the set and the, you know, the props guys had laid everything out. She's like, no, nope, it's not how it would be. This is where this goes. This is where this goes. You, you take it in that hand. I was like, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> um, she was very, very, very strict. Uh, but, you know, I, I love all of that. You know, you, there's only a certain amount of... You can learn, um, but... I always like to try and do as much research as I can, but we always have these great medical advisors on set. So. We had one in um, in South Africa, and I mean, they, there's so much detail that goes in, and we were talking about what um, bile or puke looks like when you're throwing up. <laughs> and I mean, he, he we were actually looking at different different ones that they'd made, different consistency, yeah. and he was like, no, 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 you need something with a bit more bile in it. So they worked out, and eventually it was like egg whites they put in with this other <laughs> stuff, but it's just like so much, you're like, I don't care, just give me something, to, I'm just going to throw it out anyway. Nobody's going to see. No, we need egg whites, we need egg whites and vanilla essence. Yeah. Career goals, like bandit critique and, uh, and, <laughs> and bandage pad critique, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, who else are we going? Right Hi, over there. I'm a really big fan of the show. I'd like to know what is the best part of your working day? Oh, walking on set. It's, it never gets old. Um, I think there's something really magical about film sets, um, especially when you walk through studios or walk through lots and there's carpenters hammering away, there's people moving things. It's like a little city of... It always reminds me of Fraggle Rock. I don't know if people know that. Like, <laughs> there's just so much stuff going on. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, I think if you've dreamed of being an actor since you were a kid, you know, that little butterfly in your stomach of when you're walking through and there's so much activity and you're like, oh, I get to do this for a living. I, I think that's always the highlight. And then it steadily goes downhill all day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's true. After like the 12th take. <laughs> You're like, hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hate you all. We're still doing this scene. <laughs> no, but there's always, a, you know, especially, you know, we said in one and two, the seasons, you know, in Scotland, you know, there's always a moment where you're just looking out on location and you're just like, wow. Uh, and I think on this, this season, especially, I mean, there was one day we were shooting on a beach in South Africa and there were dolphins in the water next to us, maybe a, a few hundred feet away. And they, they were like trying to attract our attention the whole day. <laughs> And unless I was filming, shooting a scene and I'd just be like, kind of like side-eyeing them the whole time because they were like waving their tails and it was so fun. Check they wanted to cam you. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're like, get us into the show too. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for coming in today. Watch thank you so for having us. It thank starts you for coming. Sunday, September 10th, 8 p.m. on Stars and the Stars app. Drink them up all the season. Woo! Drink it up. Droughtlander's over. Thanks, everyone.